earthly blessings are made to be shared. Jesus taught that how we share our food and clothing with those who are in need and how we share our time with those who are sick or in prison will affect our destiny in the afterlife because how we handle these earthly blessings is a reflection of our true belief in Jesus as Lord over our life. Take a look at Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. Today we look at Jesus' parable about the rich man and the beggar recorded in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. In the parable, Jesus spoke of a rich man who was dressed in fine clothes and ate well. But just outside the gate to the rich man's house laid a beggar named Lazarus who was covered in sores. He was starving and was in need of care. Lazarus would have relished eating even the crumbs left over from the rich man's meals, but the rich man ignored Lazarus every day. In the story, Lazarus and the rich man both died. Lazarus was taken straight to heaven and was received in the company of his ancestors. The rich man, however, was sent to Hades. From his place of torment, the rich man could see Lazarus being loved and cared for. The tables had been reversed, and now the rich man longed for even drippings of water that might come from Lazarus's fingertips. But the patriarch Abraham in heaven explained to the rich man that a great and permanent chasm had grown between the rich man and those in heaven. The rich man's self-centered actions on earth had separated him from the eternal blessings of heaven. He was distressed by his unalterable plight, but he had brothers who were still alive on earth, so the rich man asked Father Abraham to send Lazarus back to earth to warn his brothers about the pain that awaits those who selfishly hoard their blessings. Then at least they could avoid hell. But Abraham responded, If your brothers are not heeding the warnings from Moses and the prophets, uh, they likely would ignore a message even from someone who was risen from the dead and returned to earth. That's uh, Luke 16, uh, verse 31. Did you notice in this parable that Jesus gave a name to the poor man, Lazarus, but the rich man was nameless? The rich man was anonymous. Uh, He was a nobody in heaven. The book of life did not list the rich man's name. Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15 describes the final judgment of mankind. The dead are lined up before the great white throne of judgment and were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the book of life. That's Revelation 20 verse 12. Uh, but wait, you may say, a uh, redemption is a gift. We can't earn our, salva- our salvation. Romans 10.8 says that the only requirement for entrance into heaven is that we declare with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. The brother of Jesus, James, explained that true belief in Jesus is a life-changing event and is reflected, therefore, in our actions. He pointed out even, even Satan's demons believe that Jesus exists, that's James 2, verses 18 and 19, but believing in Jesus to be our, the Lord over our life and claiming his sacrifice and resurrection as the atoning act for our soul will make us a changed person, one who has compassion for others as Christ has had compassion for each of us. The true believer provides for those in need and expends time on behalf of the sick and imprisoned, Matthew twenty-five thirty-one through 46. Jesus' parable was bleak. He was confronting the listeners with the stark reality that we are blessed to be a blessing, and if we shirk our responsibility, that reflects our true heart. The Apostle Paul explained to the early church in Corinth that God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. And to that he added, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. That's 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 11. 
God provides for us, not so that we can lavish blessings on ourselves, but so that we can freely share with others. The compassion we demonstrate for others reveals our true belief in Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. The prophet Isaiah wrote that the Lord calls the redeemed by name. That's Isaiah 43, 1. He knows his people and calls them by name. That's John 10, 3. Their names are listed in the book of life, Revelation 20, verse 15. So how does this parable about judgment and the need for compassion speak to you? Reflect, if you will, on these uh, questions for introspection. Question number one, how have you experienced God's compassion? Question number two, how are you responding to the needs of others? Are you sharing your time, attention, and resources with those whom God has placed in your path? And question number three, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23 says that many will profess to be Christians, but only those who do the will of God will be known by Jesus. When you are called into eternity and your actions are examined, will your name be listed as one who exhibited the compassion of Christ? Is your name known in heaven during his lifetime, Jesus taught that his disciples would be known by their Christ-like loving actions. That's John 13, 35. If Jesus is Lord of our life, then our everyday actions will reflect that. Too often our inclination is to simply ignore the needs of others, but Jesus set the example, and you and I are called to live lives of compassion. The time for compassion is right now. Needs of others are presented to us every day, but the opportunity for service to others ends when we gasp our last breath on earth. May we spend our time on this planet wisely, glorifying God through acts of compassion. <music>